Hello and welcome back to my channel. Last week was a hard act to follow, but I think that it serves as a good reminder that going forward, indie games are probably going to be our best bet for any kind of good entertainment, shall we say. And I have been in a big ol' Resident Evil mood lately. Maybe it's because the theming around corporations and authority has become so integral to our daily lives. Maybe it's because I think Albert Wesker is cute, and I recently made him and a bunch of other villains in The Sims. But I think it's time to pop into some third-person indie zombie games. First on the chopping block is Project Z by Renestev, which leapt out at me for its scarcity of information. The only information on its page is that it's a prototype inspired by Resident Evil 4, and having played it, I believe it. It came out in February of this year, so she's fresh. You play an unnamed lady on a spaceship with an eye patch, and I kind of like that we don't know much about her, but that her design has so much personality that we can just kind of fill in the blanks for ourselves. In my case, she is the captain of that ship, and she's also very, very gay. The graphics are polished, which was nice. There's either something off about the ammo counter, or the handgun consumes more ammo than you would think, because it's depleted in a kind of inconsistent way. Everything that wasn't graphical needed a little bit of polish, but overall it left a good taste. There's some gun variety. The jump scares were a shock the first time, but predictable afterwards, which made me feel strategic. A uh, story would have been nice, if only because it kind of abruptly ends after the zombie horde. So some kind of ending maybe would have been nice, uh, like say the ship blows up, or the protagonist gets a nice cup of tea and sit down with her cat. Am I just turning her into Ellen Ripley from Aliens? Most definitely. But just any, any kind of context to the ending would have been a little bit more good. Next is Genesis Survival Horror from... 96ESUS, I think is how I'm pronouncing that. You play Steve L. Anderson, a writer who goes to investigate a murder in his city but gets routed and needs to find a better way to make it there. Right off the bat, we've got a language barrier since the game is in Spanish. But since fear is a universal emotion and Spanish is a romance language and I've studied a couple of those, I think that I would kind of know my way around. Turns out I might have needed to know a little more than that because I couldn't find the flashlight and my time with this game was the shortest as a result. Still, it had some good sound effects. Everywhere but the footsteps, in fact, which are constantly making noises like you're running. In the name of being constructive, I would maybe make the flashlight a little easier to find and translate the game. Since it's indie and there's no voice acting, it would be easy to run the script through Google Translate. Even if the translation comes out a little janky, it would still expand the accessible audience and make the game a little more... penetrable? Complete. Global. Penetration. Lastly, we've got Codename AN by Picurco7, released in 2016 and updated two years ago. Explicitly said to be modeled after old-school survival horror, it seemed up my alley. Unfortunately, it was kind of weak as a game. It was in top-down, which is something that I more tolerate in a game than look forward to. Hades and Blood Omen are good examples of games where I just kind of got over it and got into the game properly. But in this case, it gives AN the look of one of those free-to-play mobile games, as does the character model looking a lot like Jill Valentine. Like, it kind of looks like they just filed the serial numbers off of Jill. Fine, fine, okay. You know, you're an indie developer, you're working with what you got. There was also some problems with the gameplay. I couldn't figure out how to interact with the world, which would have been useful when I came across the police officer who presumably had a gun, but most definitely had a med pack. Also, if a game says don't go this way, there's usually a gate or a fence to make their point and make it so that we can't go that way. But the impulse of every gamer is to take the wrong path first, because if you take the wrong path and there's goodies down there, then you take the right path. But if you take the right path, you miss the goodies. Instead, there was a graphical glitch, and I think I sunk under the world. <laughs> Putting up a fence would have been an easy solution, but the developer didn't bother. According to his itch.io page, the developer is serving in their military as of a year ago, so it might be a while before we see any movement on this game and any kind of fence put up for it. If I had to rank them, it would go Project Z, Genesis, and then Codename AN. But Genesis and AN should be tied, honestly. I couldn't get into either of them properly, but Genesis had the stronger sound design and a story, even if I had to dig around on the developer page to find it. Overall, Project Z wins the best, though. But did it scratch my Resident Evil itch? Honestly? Kind of, yeah. To me, Resident Evil is something that I play because I love the characters and the spectacle of the enemies. 
but given that I couldn't find enemies, let alone a way to defend against them in the latter two games, it's hard to get their Resident Evil experience from them. But they all bring up their good Resident Evil feelings in their own ways. Codename AN references the setting most explicitly and gives the impression of kind of a top-down, low-budget Resident Evil. Genesis has the amazing sound design that I praise older Resident Evil games for, and Project Z's polished combat and simple interface makes me feel like I'm playing Resident Evil 4 in space! And that's what I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please go ahead and click the like button. If you aren't subscribed already, I recommend that you do that. Next week is the best of 2020 list, and then after that, who knows? I know, I've got a few things cooked up. I don't know, I'm working on it. But happy holidays. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.